Look at someone close to you and say good morning. How many of you are glad to just be alive another day that the Lord has blessed us? Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. If you want to see God's glory, he's closer than hands and feet. Whatever you need today, you want to reach out for him and give him the glory and the praise.
many of you just want to see Jesus one of these days and just say thank you for all that you've done for me. You saved us, you changed us, you transformed us for your glory. For your glory. I will do anything that is its flavor how shall it be seasoned it is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men you are the light of the world everybody say you are the light of the world a city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing as well as the doing of his holy word. How many of y'all want to let our light shine, amen? It's not what you say, it's what you do. Let us pray. Our Lord, now God, we, we first magnify you right now, Father. We first give thanks to you, Father. We thank you for sitting high and looking low, Father. We thank you for protecting us, Lord. Oh, Father, we have made mistakes along the way. Oh, but we thank you so much that you are a forgiving God. Father, you said you cast our sins as far as the east as to the west. And so, Lord, we come before you, Lord, asking that our heart be cleansed before you, Lord, that you renew the right spirit in our heart so that we may be able to come before your throne of grace with a humble heart, Lord. Father, you said that if we exalt ourselves, you will humble us. But we're here, Father, to be humble before your sight. No matter what transpired, Father, we know that you have all power and authority. We can tell that enemy to be gone. Get out of my life. Get behind these well, Satan well, today. Well. Oh, Lord, we welcome in your Holy Spirit, Lord, that you may teach us, Lord, to stay on the right path. Father, not looking to the left or to the right. Bless the young people of this day, Lord. Father, we are living in perilous times, but you're giving us each a choice, Lord. You have put your word on every man's conscience so that we will all be without excuse when your son cometh 
from the glory in the clouds, Father, for his people. Oh, Lord, he's coming for a church without spot or without wrinkle, Lord. And we want to be that church because we are the temple of the living God. Oh, Lord, we magnify you in this hour right now, Lord. Asking for that forgiveness, Lord. Now, bless each family that is represented to here, Lord. Father, we know we have some. We have lost some. Father, we are sick. Father, we are we are, we are barren in our finances, Lord. But, Father, we know you are the way, the truth, yes, and God. the life, yes, Lord. God. Father, you are. You said you will never see the righteous forsaken or our seed begging bread. And so we offer ourselves to you, Father. We ask that the word of God go forth today with power and anointing, Father, from on high. Oh, Lord, we seek your presence today, Father. And we say thank you. We thank say you, thank you. We say thank you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Let the church say amen. Amen. For your glory. Come on, everybody, say it. I will do anything just to see you. To be all you have, I need. For your glory. I will do anything just to see you. One more time, won't you just wave your hand if you want to be where he is. After it's all over, I want to be where he is. How many of you know we're going to live forever? But let's be in the presence of God. Hallelujah, I want to be where he is. Come on, everybody say, I want to be where you are. I want to be where you are. Got to be. One more time, I want. I want to be where you are. I gotta be. I gotta be where you are. Hallelujah. Yes. How many of you come to enjoy yourself on yes. today? Yes. Give My God, God glory and praise. Yes, How many of you know that God is great? Somebody say, God is great, and He's greatly to be praised. You need to put, get ready to put your hand together.
praise him this morning. Right there. He's worthy. My God. He's worthy. Has God been good to you? Yes, yes. Has God been good to you? Yes. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, he's been good to me. He's been good. Look at your other neighbor and say, he's been good to me. Somebody say, he's sure enough been good to me. How many of you thank him for his mercy? Amen in his grace. He woke us up this morning. Amen. I was on a trip during last week, and I thank God for everyone who uh, prayed for us, and not only that, but kept everything in line, all the administrators and leaders and ministers who were there. And I thank God that even as you go up to 35,000 feet in the air, amen, how many of you know God can bring you down? Hallelujah. There were some rough times. It was, they say, put your seatbelt on. It's getting pretty raggedy now. I was just praying. Y'all know I take the Lord along with me? Everywhere I go, I was like, Lord, hold him. I said, be up there with the pilot and hold his hand. Somebody say amen. amen. I ain't playing with it. Amen. And we're going to come down because I'm on the, I'm on the uh, plane. Somebody say amen. <laughs> amen. But I, you want to be prayerful because we never know the date nor the hour. Somebody say amen. When the Son of God will come and receive us unto himself. And so we just thank God for traveling mercies and even another day that God has allowed us to enjoy. So let us make sure in our mind that we want to give God the glory. Is he worthy? Yes, he is. is he worthy? Yes, he is. <laughs> when I think of the goodness of Jesus. And all that he's done for me. My soul cries out. I said, my soul cries out. I can't hear you. My soul cries out. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank the Lord for saving us. How many of you thank God for saving you? Amen. Listen, God is already working in the lives of those who are listening, those who are here, even present right now. Pray that you just open up your heart and your mind, that you be ready to receive him even as uh, he is. He, he welcomes you. He's longing for you, and he loves you. Somebody say amen. amen. Do me one more favor. Look at your neighbor and say, God loves you. Amen. amen. Just like you are. He loves you. He loves you. Amen. We have just a few announcements that we want to share with that. Sister Sonia, let's give her a hand as she comes. Good morning. I have a few announcements I'd like to share with you. We will be having Bible study this coming Wednesday. Noon Bible study is on Zoom. And evening Bible study is here um, at 6.30 here in the church. If you look at our slides, we have... Um, Last Tuesday, some of us went to Father Keith Bikini, that's our adopted school, and they had attendance day. And so this is one of the activities and events that we, um, we go to and host for the school. We take them lunch. And so this is what we did on Tuesday, just uh, like three of us went. And this is what um, we do in addition to the weekly activities that they do, like reading and being a lunch buddy and going on field trips. So we wanted to share that with you to let you know that this is another activity that we do with the school. And then we're going to be coming up at the end of the school year. They have like a carnival or whatever. We're involved with that. We're going to need volunteers for that. So we will be talking about that um, later. Thursday, April 11th at 6 o'clock p.m., we're going to have the Oak Park Peace Walk. The walk will begin here at New St. Bethel, and they're only for one hour. We, along with other churches and the Sacramento Police Department, we go out once a month, interacting with individuals in the community, listening to their thoughts and concerns. So please join us. Attention New St. Bethel ladies, you are invited to join our women's choir. We announced uh, a couple of months ago that uh, the fifth Sundays um, every, every the month that we're going to be forming a women's choir. So the first one we're going to be having um, is June 30th. And because we're having also Women's Day in June, we're going to be singing twice that month, all women. And so the rehearsal for Women's Day, June 9th, is on June 6th at 6.30 p.m. 
The dates for the rehearsals for June 30th are June 13th and 20th at 7.15 p.m. and then June 27th at 6.30 p.m. And we have a flyer up in the hallway um, on our bulletin board. We're gonna be announcing that again um, as, as the month goes along. But all women, no matter whether you can sing or not, whether you think you can sing or not, please come out and join the choir. If you're interested, please contact Sister Erica Weatherspoon or Sister Raynell Davis. And then with, they will be sharing the music prior to beginning the rehearsals. So that's all the announcements I have for today. Thank you and have a blessed week. Amen. I got it now. Amen, church. Thank you so much, Sister Sonia. I'm coming on behalf of the Outreach Ministry. First, we want to say thank you to all of those who have supported the ministry. Um, we go out and we share with those less fortunate than ourselves. The, I don't want to say homeless, the unhoused is what they use, politically correct way. Um, there's a lot of people out there that need us. Amen. We're the gap. God sent us. He's, he, 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 he placed a light in us so that we can go share with those less fortunate. And so we, we have a list. You have a, something in your program today. This is a list of items that we, we share. We share hygiene products. Um, and we will appreciate your participation. And if we invite you all to come out every fourth Saturday here at the church at 11 o'clock. And we go out and we, we shake hands. We touch, we hug, we pray with people. How many know that was a command by Jesus for us to go? And so I'm offering you to come and be a part of that. And again, if you can't come, can you still support us and participate with some of these items? And so you can see myself, I'm Deacon Christopher Gordon. Also, you can see my partner in crime, uh, Sister Nicole Gordon. Raise your hand, Sister Nicole in the corner. There she is. Also. Sister, Sister Catherine Taylor, raise your hand. There she is. And Brother Myron, raise your hand, Brother Myron. We teammates. Amen. Just one. So we, we just would love for your support, and we appreciate you coming out. So we look forward to that. Every fourth Saturday at 11 a.m., we leave promptly. Amen. Amen. We just thank God for all the announcements that have been shared. Once again, I just want to reiterate, we do need volunteers for the school. Uh, we want to, if you are available, we want to um, see Sister Elisa Young. Amen. And we can do it so that you can visit on a regular. But this is what we want to do when it comes to the end of the year, when it comes to that great celebration where we have games and things of that sort. I want as many volunteers as possible to come with us and go to the school. We'll give you more information and more details, but we need men. It was really excellent. Last time we uh, were able to share with them in that way, we had games on the, in the uh, playground area. Uh, there were several men, and many had complimented that there were men that were coming and serving, uh, helping with the games, things of that sort. How many of you know we can do that again? I said, how many of you know we can do it again? I want as many men as possible to come because you want to have representation. How many of you know there are some children without fathers in their home? So come on, somebody. We need to understand that we are the lights in the world, and we have to love on them. You've loved on your children. You've raised your children. They are elementary school children who don't have the love and support of mom and dad like you had or enjoyed. Amen. And so we want to be that for them. Somebody say amen. 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 And also with the outreach that's going out, it shouldn't be four or five. They are the leaders within the group. Amen. As soon as my schedule permits, I'm planning on going out because I believe that uh, if I'm a leader, I should be leading out. Somebody say amen. amen. And I, I love those. Those are my brothers and sisters out there who are without homes. How many of you thank God for the place where you reside? I mean, if you thank God that you have everything that you need, all the amenities that you need, amen? We want to make sure that we give them uh, whatever they need in Jesus' name. Somebody say, in Jesus' name. Amen. We want to love on them. That is truly our responsibility. Those of you uh, with the Bible, you want to read Matthew chapter 25. 
read Matthew chapter 25, and there's a portion where he says he separated the right, uh, the, the good, the good sheep and those who were, were not so good. He separated them. He said, well, what's the problem? He said, you didn't serve the least of these, my beloved. He said, in, whenever you serve the least of these, you have done it unto me. And so I take that very seriously, and we want to all do that because that's our responsibility as children of God. Amen. Somebody say amen. Amen. It's kind of quiet in here right now. Somebody say amen. But the work needs to go on. Somebody say, you praise him right now, but you leave to serve. You come in to worship and give God the glory and the praise, but then you go give a cold cup of water to somebody who's in need. Somebody say amen. When you go out today and when you go out into the world, it was raining the last few days that I heard about. Amen. And how many of you know the homeless, they got their tents and you mad because they got them under the bridges, they got them here and there. Amen. We can take some of them off the street if we love on them just right. Somebody say amen. Amen. And so we just thank God for that. Women's Day is coming up. This is my last little piece for right now. Amen. Women's Day. How many women do we have in the building? All right, we want to be off the hook with the women's uh, choir. Amen. We just thank God for these ladies. Let's give these ladies a hand. We appreciate them. But we want to make sure if we have to go all the way across, amen, we can just go all the way across. And, and then you invite your friends to come and hear you sing. Somebody say amen. Then they'll fill in the in the audience. Somebody say amen. Amen. But we want to give God the glory and the praise and we thank God in advance for those who are taking leadership in the women's uh, department. Miss Raynell Davis, let's give her a hand. She does a marvelous job keeping it all together. Now we're going to go a little bit higher. We're going to ask for the choir to come. Amen. We're going to sing a little bit more for you. Then we have a word for you on this morning and I thank God for my brother who is going to share with us on this morning but I'll give him a further introduction because we're getting ready to praise God for a little while how many of you thank God that you were worth saving somebody might not know that but you were worth saving
give him a praise right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you thank God for saving you? How many of you really thank God for saving you? How many of you thank God for touching you even right now? That's the Lion of Judah. Come on, put your hand together. Come on, put your hand together. Everybody, come on.
God. stopping because y'all want to stop. My God. How many of you want to help, help lift God higher? Right now, right now. How many of you thank God for the Lion of Judah? Hallelujah. Amen. I just thank God for my, for Sister Erica. Let's give Sister Erica. She loves that song, and you can tell. Sister Erica Witherspoon, we thank God for her. Thank God for the entire family. We thank God also for our associates that we have here. Uh, and our brothers beloved, amen, as we go forth in ministry. You thank God that every once in a while they give us a break. Amen. Every once in a while we have an opportunity uh, to uh, relax and enjoy and be fed. Somebody say amen. amen. But we have a man of a God who here who has truly been a blessing to us. Amen. Has been with us for a long time now. Amen. But we just... He's not new to us, but you will hear a word from the Lord. And we thank God for one who loves God. Amen. And we thank God for a doctor, a reverend. And he's really a doctor, doctor, reverend, not a medical doctor, but a doctor in theology. Somebody say amen. amen. Dr. Reverend R. Jerome Thomas. Amen. Let me put this on. Junior, no, but anyway, <laughs> but we just thank God for him. Let's give Pastor Thomas a hand as he comes and shares in his own way. Come on, thank God for her. Amen. His lovely wife, Susan, we thank God. Amen. Let's stand and give him a hand of praise as he comes and shares with us what the Lord has given. Come on, a better hand than that. Come on, everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Since you're standing, get out your word as we break open the word of life. Amen. Turn to the gospel of St. Luke, Luke 24. Luke 24. We're going to read two passages in Luke 24. The first one, verses 13 through 17. Luke chapter 24 when you find that say amen. amen amen Luke 24 and 13 the word of the Lord and behold two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus which was from Jerusalem about three score furlongs and they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. And he said unto them, What manner of communication? Are these that you have one to another as ye walk and are sad? And going down to the 33rd verse. And they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together and them that were with them, saying, The Lord is risen indeed. And had appeared to Simon. And they turned, told what things were done in the way. And how he was known of them in breaking the bread. And as they thus spoke, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them. And said unto them, Peace be unto you. Re please repeat after me. Transformation. On the road to Emmaus. Amen. Please be seated. Amen. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this pastor, for the, this assembly, for this household of faith. We ask you, Lord, to guide our lips, Lord, right now. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I 
Praise God for the songs that have been sung. They're so appropriate for the message. You know when the Holy Ghost is hooking it up. When the songs hook up with your word. Amen? Amen, amen. Transformation on the road to Emmaus. Certain people stand out to me. Especially people that are distinctive. If you saw certain people on the street, you would have no doubt who they were. Amen? If Denzel Washington walked down the street, you'd know him. I know some of y'all would know him. <laughs> if you heard Surly Caesar shout, Blessed assurance, you'd know her. If you heard Barack Obama say, yes, we can. Or Aretha saying his eye is on the sparrow, it would be undeniable. Other than his mercy and compassion, the man who joined the two on the road to Emmaus, really didn't stand out. He was a man unlike any other. But he was not known by the talk shows he appeared on. Not known by the next Netflix specials. He never appeared in the National Enquirer. Or dawned the front cover of People magazine. In fact, it was hard to tell he was any different than you and I. His clothes were ordinary. He didn't even own a cot or a sleeping bag. One gospel writer said, foxes have holes. Birds have nests. But the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. He had a mother that loved him, and he bled if he got cut. But more than any other personality trait, one thing stood out. This man came to change hearts. One evangelist said, we're suffering from only one disease in the world, one basic problem. It's not a poverty problem. Jesus said, the poor you will have with you always. It's not a war problem. For we do not war after the flesh. Our basic problem is a heart problem. We need our heart transformed. Today we meet two men who encountered the resurrected Jesus on the road to Emmaus, seven, seven miles from Jerusalem. Not just any man, but one man named Cleophas, Joseph's brother, Mary's husband, and actually Jesus' uncle. It appears what they witnessed during the Passover week was too much to bear. So today we're going to look at seven different types of heart conditions. We know that seven is a complete number, amen? It stands for perfection, amen? Seven different top types of heart condition. Dr. Luke, the, the writer of this gospel, was specific because he knew people are complex. These seven heart types are evident not only in the human spirit, but in this story. One, we find the first type of heart condition is the blind heart. Blind heart, verse 16. But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. The New Revised Standard Version says their eyes were kept from recognizing him. 
The Greek word krateo means to hold in check or restrain. So their eyes were being restrained so as to not know him. It's not that they did not see Jesus, but when they saw him, they did not know it was him. Cleophas was Jesus' uncle. You think he'd know his own nephew. When you go to a family gathering, you know everybody. A little family reunion, you know all the cousins and the uncles and the aunts, all the family members. We don't know if the resurrected Jesus was changed in appearance, but this much is clear. After the resurrection, Jesus could appear and disappear when he wanted. He could make himself known and then unknown. Jesus could be in the kitchen one second, and in the next second, he was sitting right next to you in his resurrected body. With our natural mind, sometimes we have blind spots. Somebody go help me preach today. I know I make mistakes. Instead of speaking in detailed language, I, my wife tells me I speak in code. Our brains are wired to make assumptions. Sometimes the unconscious mind is on automatic pilot. It takes over. And we think we're right, but we're really off base. We think it's an honest mistake, but science calls this a blind spot. Anybody here got some blind spots? All right, all right. We need to pray for those. Amen. Scripture says our senses can be dits and dull in our understanding of faith. Jesus told the disciples that he would rise in three days. Amen. But in mourning, people can be blinded by despair, blinded by sorrow, and blinded by unbelief. Two, a second type of heart condition is the sad heart. In verse 17, Jesus said, what kind of conversation is this that you have one with one another as you walk and are sad? The two disciples were sad because when Jesus died, based on their understanding of prophecy, they lost all hope. They didn't understand that Jesus' death offered the greatest hope possible. Amen? Oh, it's natural to be sad when a loved one dies. Natural to share memories about the one who's passed. But it's especially sad when someone dies and we think they did not meet their full potential. Amen? Aren't we like that? We're disappointed by things that, we, that were supposed to make our life peaceful. Sometimes we're disappointed by jobs, disappointed by relationships, and even disappointed by God. Amen? The things that were supposed to give us peace fell short or fell apart. Instead of an inauguration in Jerusalem, the disciples witnessed the crucifixion of their hope for king. As the resurrected Jesus listened to their narrative, he pondered, you're sad because you're not telling the whole truth. As told by the prophets. Three, a third type of heart condition on the road to Emmaus was the slow heart. Luke 24, verses 25 through 27, speaks of how foolish and how slow they were to believe all that the prophets had spoken. My brothers and my sisters, it's an awful thing to be rebuked by Jesus. Can you imagine being rebuked 
by Jesus as a fool with a slow heart, slow of understanding, slow of faith. Oh, I tell you, it's better to be rebuked now to be rebuked at judgment. Jesus broke it down line by line, precept by precept. He said, it's not in Scripture, but this is what I believe he said. From the first prophecy in Genesis 3.15, as soon as the serpent caused Adam and Eve to sin in the garden, the Scripture says Christ would utterly crush and eternally defeat Satan. You go back to the scripture and see that. As soon as we fail, God provided, provided Jesus to crush Satan. We already got the victory. He said it all the way back in Genesis. Then Jesus went on to Psalms 22 where it says, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Then he went on to Isaiah 53 and 4 that says, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes, we are healed. He broke it down. He tried to make it plain to help them remember. Oh, we, we often feel helpless in our situation, and we miss the help when we don't follow the truth. We are slow of heart because we fail to recognize the truth. Of the word. These two men had been to Bible study on Wednesday, but they couldn't remember any verses. They couldn't handle the pain of what they had seen in Jerusalem. So they had to escape. Jesus told them to go meet me in Jerusalem, but they had to escape. So they went back home. Went back home on their way to Emmaus. Oh, write this down. Spiritual dark dullness will cause you to miss your blessing. Spiritual dark dullness will cause us to miss our blessing. Some of you are wondering why you're missing your blessing. Too many of us are like the Ethiopian eunuch. Philip asked the Ethiopian, do you understand what you're reading? The Ethiopian said, how can I accept some man guide me? At New St. Bethel, you don't have that excuse. Amen. You got a whole lot of teachers and deacons and deaconess around here to help you break open the word of God. Oh, to prevent yourself from being rebuked by Jesus, remember Hebrews 4.12. That says, for the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart to keep your heart right to keep your mind stayed on jesus you've got to stay in the word of god 24 7 366 amen amen for then we see the fourth type of heart condition on the road was the forgetful heart. Anybody ever forget anything? Some of us go into a room and we forgot why we even. The two disciples were so distressed that they lost the capacity to access their biblical memory. They were so traumatized. Some of y'all know what that means. I'm not trying to bring back anything, but trauma can cause difficulty in our spirit, in our actions, in our steps, and how we focus on the word and on Jesus and on our blessings. They were so traumatized. World War II folks call it shell shock. 
that they forgot the words of Psalms 119, 11 that says, I have hidden the word in my heart that I might not sin against thee. You got to hide the word in your heart. You know, you know, it's like hiding a seed. When you really want to hide a seed, you, you, don't, you don't put it on the top. You push it down. Amen. I just, I just grew some tulips this year. And you can't put no tulips. You can't grow tulips on the top. You got to push it down eight or nine inches down into the soil. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. If you really want them to grow, you got to. You got to ruminate and meditate on the word like a cow. Chews on, a, chews on, a, on, on his cud. You know, a cow has four stomachs. Thank you, Lord. It eats, it regurgitates, then it goes into a couple more stomachs before you get the milk. It takes time. You need to meditate on the word. Or when you hide God's truth in your heart, it will become accessible. When you need it. Just keep on living. Keep on living. You're going to need God's word to help you. Need God's word to help you pray. Help you witness. And help you make some, some blessed decisions. When you hide God's word in your heart, you'll have self-control and grace-filled perspective. Five, the fifth type of health condition is the Passover heart. In Luke 24, 31, the Bible says they broke bread. This ritual was such an integral part of the Jewish tradition, the gesture opened their eyes. Only when Jesus broke the bread, the reason they may have recognized him was the scars in his hand. When Jesus raised his hand to bless the bread, they could see the scars in his palms. And when the two men saw the nail scars, they said, like Thomas, my Lord and my God. Oh, this would have been a telltale sign. At that time, they had an epiphany. I pray that, that you have a, an epiphany. In the morning, when I wake up, I ask for the Lord to give me an epiphany. Lord, give me, a, give me an understanding of your glory, an understanding of your grace, an understanding of your love. And after I get that epiphany, I usually write some notes. And if I really have time, I put it on Facebook. It's a spirit God has given me, a blessing, a word, not just on Sunday. But I want a word every day in my heart. I need something to help me walk right and talk right and be his disciple. Amen. 1 Corinthians 5, 7 says, Christ has become our Passover lamb. Amen. And by his blood, all sin can be purged. Like the song says, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Every time we take the bread, which represents Christ's body, and take the cup, representing his blood shed for us, we see. And our eyes are open. We need our eyes open, amen? So many things in the world trying to close our eyes, trying to restrain our eyes so that we can notice things. You need to be woke in the Lord, amen? You need to have an awareness, a consciousness. And the Lord, be, being prayerful and staying in your word, will give you that consciousness. Here we was talking about, let us keep the feast, but not with all, the old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Amen. For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Behold, the lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the whole world. Oh, the, the, the sixth type of heart experience on the world to Emmaus was a burning heart. Amen. Luke 24, 32 reads, and they said one to another, 
did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us, by the way, and while he opened to us the scripture? Or why should, why should we desire a burning heart? Because a burning heart is filled with faith, I believe, plus love I give, plus hope I expect, which equates to conviction I know. Amen. Amen. Every time you wake up and in the morning and pray, you need to get up and, and walk and say, I know that I know that I know that I know that Jesus is Lord. He's my rock and my shield. You need, that's how you need to live. I know that I know that I know. Oh, before, before Jesus showed up on earth in his bodily form, Job states way back in 1800 B.C., for I know that my Redeemer lives, and he shall stand at the latter day on the earth. That's heavy. That's really, really, really heavy when you think about it. Way back when Job lost his cattle, lost his servant. He was the richest man in Edom. He lost all that. But his faith was right here. He knew that his Redeemer lived. Amen. And he still lives. Oh, when you have a burning heart, nobody can stop your Christian walk. Maybe you can't do it, but God can. I'm so glad I had a Jeremiah experience. The prophet Jeremiah complained to God. He said, when I speak the truth, everybody mocks me. Everybody talks about me. I'm tired of being talked about. So Jeremiah said, I'm, I'm not going to speak the word of the Lord anymore. But then Jeremiah said, God's word burned in my heart like fire. It was like fire. Shut up in my bones. I was worn, Jeremiah said, I was worn out trying to hold it in. I couldn't do it. So I had to let it out. Yeah. Amen. I hope you've had a Jeremiah experience. Not just one time, but every day if need be. Amen. I got fire. Shut up in my bone. I'm glad Pastor Jones realized that. Amen. He sees me burning over there in the second seat of the front row. He said, oh, man, it, it, amen. Got to get this brother I'm up here. Share some of that fire. Or if you're going to worship God, Scripture says true worship was worship in spirit and truth. If you're going to tell the gospel story, tell the truth. Amen. Just like fire purifies metal, the Holy Ghost uses the word of God to purify our lives. Sometimes the fire of God's word burns our conscience so we can walk right. And finally, the seventh type of heart experience on the road to Emmaus is the rejoicing heart. Amen. Luke 24 and 33 says they got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven, and those with them assembled together and saying, it's true. It's true. The Lord has risen. Oh, once you have a burning heart, you will naturally rejoice. Re the Bible says rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. You know, I, I had an epiphany. That's why Pastor Jones wants you to stand up and clap and praise God. He wants you to rejoice. Not of what you are now, but what Jesus has done for you and for us. Well, let me tell you why I'm glad he arose. With all power in his hand, I shout. Because when I fell 25 feet from a balcony one April Fool day, the Lord caught me. I should have broken my neck. My head was cracked with 12 stitches. 
My wrist was broken, and my right knee was bruised for a while, but God patched me up, helped me to walk three months later. I shout because one evening in the midnight hour, when I thought my bed was going to be my cooling board, he came. I said, Lord, I know you want to use me, but you, you got to lower this 105 temperature. Oh, I'm not going to have anything left to work with. Don't you know he comes in the midnight hour? Like the song says, late in the midnight hour, God's going to turn around, turn around, turn around, and turn around. Oh, yes, he will. Somebody ought to help me here. I shout because he showed up on the road when a Kenyan pulled out a 22 caliber gun and told me I'm going to kill you right now. Oh, Lord. I don't know about your testimony, but Jesus showed up, changed the mind of that man. And in five minutes, he had to put his gun back in his belt. I said, thank you, Jesus. One more time. So many times I've needed Jesus to show up and work things out. I needed Jesus to step in and be my mediator. Oh, Jesus. You know him, don't you? The matchless lamb of God. Jesus, the son of God without sin. Jesus, the son of man with power. Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Jesus, the beginning and the end. Jesus, the creator and deliverer. Jesus, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. Jesus, you know him. The good shepherd. Jesus, the light of the world. You know him. God's only son, Mary's baby boy, Matthew's king. Mark's sovereign servant, Luke's great physician, John's word made flesh, Acts coming of the Holy Ghost. Y'all know him, don't you? He's a rock in a weary land. He's a shelter in the time of storm. He's a friend when you're friendless. He's bread when you're hungry. He's water when you're thirsty. Jesus. Don't you know him? He came down through 42 generations, born in Bethlehem, weird in the Nazareth. Jesus wept. God might wipe away our sin. Jesus became poor that I may be rich in him. Jesus was forsaken that I, we may never be forsaken. Jesus died that we may live. Jesus endured the cross that we may wear a crown. He died. Yes, he died. But right one early Sunday morning, uh, he arose. Yes, he did. He arose. And if he arose in your life, you ought to clap your hands. You ought to stop your feet. You ought to have joy bells coming out of your mouth. He's still good. He's still good. He's our Alpha and Omega, our first and last, our mighty counselor, our Prince of Peace. Don't you know him? Don't you know him? He's good. He's good. He's good. All the time on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, and especially on Sunday. Hallelujah! He's good. He's good. That's why I sing his praises. That's why I preach his word. Because I got fire! Hallelujah! Fire! Shut up in my bones. And I want this fire to burn out all the dross in my life that I may live for him, that I may be his child, that I may walk by faith and not by sight and walk in the spirit, 
not according to the flesh. Hallelujah. I want to be his disciple. Yes, I do. Lord, fix my eyes. Fix my ears. Fix my heart. Yes. If you had the Lord fix it, he'll do something special in your life. He'll make you a peculiar person. Amen. People will know who you are. But by, by the words that you speak, by your presence, by how you carry yourself. Amen. They'll know that the, the, they'll see the light that is in you. They'll see the love that is in you. They'll see the grace that is in you. Grace stands for God's redemption at Christ's expense. Amen. That's all I want to have. I want to have that grace upon our life, which makes me want to sing, walk, walk with me, Lord. Walk with me, Lord, while I'm on this pilgrim journey. Walk with me. Hold my hand. Hold my hand. Be my friend. Be my friend. I want Jesus to walk with me. Oh, if he walks with you, he'll, he'll talk with you. He'll, lead, he'll encourage you. He'll empower you. He'll strengthen you. When you're weak, he's strong. When you're weak, his grace is sufficient. Yes, if you let him walk with you. Yes, let him walk with you. If you're blind, he'll make you see. If you're sad, he'll make you glad. If you're slow, he'll give you Holy Ghost enthusiasm. Amen. Hallelujah. He'll help you to walk right, talk right, be his friend, be his guy. Let him talk to you. Just a little walk with Jesus. Just a little talk with Jesus. May everything, everything, not just some things, but everything, all right. Got a problem with your kids. Got a problem with your loved one. Got a problem with your taxes. Give it to the Lord. Yeah. Amen. He said the cattle on a thousand hills are his. Amen. He knows all about it. Give it to the Lord. And he'll make everything. All right. All right. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. Everyone standing to your feet. Everyone standing to your feet. My altar workers are going to come now because I'm sure that you heard a word from the Lord. How is your heart? How is your heart? Is it slow? Are you blessed of the Lord? Are you on fire for the Lord? Whatever your need is today. If you heard the Spirit of the Lord speaking to you, we want you to come. We want you to be transformed on your way home transform even this hour even this moment and we know that God can do it just like he did it for all of us he can change your heart he can change your mind and so I, I want you to consider stepping out consider stepping out and receiving Christ as your Lord and Savior if that's you and you've never been baptized you say I want to be baptized I want to dedicate my life to the Lord I want to accept him as my Lord and Savior I want to begin to walk like him. I want to be able to talk like him. I want my life to be transformed. You can step out today. Today is your day. Not only that, but if you're here, that you want to rededicate your life to the Lord. You said, I used to go to church on a regular basis, but somewhere along the way, I've got well, gone astray. But listen, if you're here today, we can get back in line. I said, we can get back on the right road. Listen, if you're here, you want to rededicate yourself, you want to be baptized, you want to be saved, you want the Lord Jesus to come into your life. Listen, if some of you are going through, you say, I love Jesus, but I'm going through. I have some situations, I have some circumstances in my life, and I need prayer, and I need someone to pray for me. Pray for me, pray for my family. I want, to stand, I want somebody to stand on behalf of Sister Moore. She lost her brother. Could her sister stand in their place? Is there someone to stand in the place of Sister Moore? 
I believe there's others here. You just need prayer. You, you're challenged through the course of the week. Some of you have been challenged just to make it here this morning. But look at God. He's still changing. He's still transforming. He's still healing. He's still saving. He's still delivering. Whatever your need is, I want you to yield it to God today. Hallelujah. Come on, let's come. Let's come. You just need prayer. Let's come. You're going through a challenge today. Cast all of your cares upon the Lord because he cares for you. He's here to change. He's here to transform. You heard the miracles that have transformed transpired in the life of Dr. Thomas. He's a walking miracle. Ladies and gentlemen, he should have been dead at a temperature of 105. Should have been dead after he fell off of the balcony and other things that he did not mention. But you need to understand that God is the one that's keeping you even right now. So why don't you come from where you are? You've been trying to do it on your own, but say today, I'm allow God to walk along with me on my own personal road to Emmaus, on your personal journey as you proceed back into the remainder of this week. Why don't you yield yourself, your situation, your circumstance, your family, yield it to Almighty God. How many of you know that God loves you? Let me see your hand if you know that God. Lord, we love you. How many of you can sing that with Lord, we love you? Lord, we love you. How many of you love him today? Lord, Lord, we Michael and Carl, thank God for you gentlemen making your way. Michael came in last week, ladies and gentlemen, in a wheelchair, but this, he walked in today. I say Michael walked in today. Raise your hand, Michael. I said he walked in today. Yeah. How many of you believe God that God can still do miracles? of you know that you can turn your your life, your search of circumstance over to God and he will extend your life. He will give you a brand new beginning. How many of you praise him today? Lord, we praise you. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we praise you. I believe there's a couple more. Why don't you come from where you are? Praise you. Hallelujah. 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 Step out in faith. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, you're worthy.
you know that God is in the healing business. Like I said, Michael came in in a wheelchair. I knew he wanted to get up. He said, I want the pastor to lay hands on me. And it's not about me, but it's about his faith. How many of you believe in God for something? How many of you want a promotion? How many of you want your mind cleared up? How many of you want your relationship to be healed and restored? Listen, God can do it. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I've seen miracles even this last week. I went to a place and signed up for a little program. And I signed up for this amount. They gave me more. Not only that, but they promised me at least four trips. All expenses paid. You say, what you put on the paper? They say, what's your occupation? I said, pastor. What's your position? Pastor. They came back and said, hey, we're going to give you some more. We're going to give you some more. How many of you know that God can do it? I'm trying to tell you. Go on a trip if you want to. Take the Lord along with you. I went into the place and I said, I ain't buying nothing. I ain't doing nothing. I didn't say it out loud, but that's what my spirit was. <laughs> I waited on the Lord, and I sat right there, and I listened to a presentation, and I listened, I listened, I listened. I want to start at a higher rate. He said, you probably start at this one right here. Then they start throwing in things. Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't see me, it's because I'm on one of those blessed trips. That just happened. Sometimes God had to make you, press you, let you put the circumstance so you won't move. And I had a heart. I was hard. I was like, I ain't getting nothing. And God said, he's going to force this blessing on you. And then he softened my heart. Then they just start pouring out. I'm telling you what God can do. How many of you are going to believe God for something that you're praying for this week? Do it. Do it. Try. You're not testing God. God has already proven himself. You think it's impossible. That's why you can't do it. Peter was walking on water until he started seeing this circumstance. And then he said, oh, he took his eyes off Jesus. He lost faith that soon, that quick, in a hurry, he was sinking. I mean, you know that Jesus walking on the water reached down into the water, even with a short prayer. Lord, save me. He just snatched him up. How many of you know that whatever you need, I want you to believe God. It sounds impossible. It sounds crazy right now. But if you trust God, in the name of Jesus, somebody say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. He can change and he can transform. But here's another thing we have to do. We already heard a sermon, a marvelous sermon. Let's give Pastor Thomas a hand. It was a beautiful presentation. How many of you saw your heart in one of the seven, which the last one probably was a testimony? As you hear the word of God and as you continue to move forward, you need to know that God loves you right where you are and he really wants to transform you. Romans chapter 12 and verse 1 and 2 says this. I beseech you brothers by the mercy of God that you present your body a living, somebody help me, sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service of us. And then verse number 2 says, be not Conform to this world, but transform by the renewing of your mind. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, your mind can be transformed. It can. How many of you believe it today? Amen. Do me a favor. Let's give the choir a hand. They did a marvelous job on today. Our band, our music. Let's thank God for the music. Miss Erica sang that song. She's lucky I didn't make her sing another round. For all of our altar workers, I want you to all stand. Let's stand. I'm going to let you go. I want to let you go. Pastor Thomas, let's give him another hand. Come on, appreciate him. And Miss Susan did a marvelous job. Pastor, won't you pray for us as we hold hands all over the building?
Let's hold hands. Pastor going to pray for us. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Everybody touching. Touching, praying, agreeing. Amen. For transformation of our hearts, our eyes, our ears, our feet, our limbs, every part of our very being. Lord, we need healing and we need deliverance. Lord, you are the ultimate neurotransmitter in our life. Lord, you can go in, in, and out. Lord, continue to heal us. We need your healing today, Lord Jesus. Let this word be written upon our hearts, Lord Jesus. Lord, help us realize that when we're blind, we once were blind, but now we see. Help us to keep on seeing, Lord. Lord, though, though our hearts may be sad, you can make us glad. Because we realize your resurrection power is still here and available to each of us. Lord, continue to keep your resurrection spirit in our life, Lord Jesus. That we may realize that, that, that all we have to do is, is put our hand in your hand. and Help us be the best version of ourselves. As we walk by faith and not by sight. Lord, be with this pastor, be with this church, be with those who are sick and shut in, who desired to be here but were not able. We pray that, that, that you will use us, use us as healing to stand in the gap for others, Lord. We know there is a bomb in Gilead. Lord, continue to use us, Lord, as instruments, as earthen vessels, as lively stones. We thank you, Lord, for your word. Be with us now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. Well, one day every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess. Help us to walk according to your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Oh, come on.